If you have osteoporosis, you've probably heard that calcium is the most important nutrient. Unfortunately, research shows that's not the case, and a different nutrient is in fact the most important and could reduce the risk of fractures by over 60%. In this presentation, you'll see what that nutrient is. Here's what you can expect to learn. First, we'll go over the research, the research that shows that calcium doesn't reduce fracture risk. After that, we'll talk about what, what nutrient actually does. By the way, it's not vitamin D. How much of this nutrient do you need and what foods do you need to consume to get this nutrient? Before we jump in, who am I? My name is Igor. I'm the author of the Amazon best-selling book called Osteoporosis Reversal Secrets. As well, I run an online personal training company that specializes in osteoporosis. And just so you don't think I'm a random guy on the internet with an opinion, I actually work with clients myself one-on-one -on -one to help them strengthen their bones, reduce their fracture risk, and improve their bone density. Here's one example. This is Darlene, who at the age of 46 was diagnosed with breast cancer. She was given chemotherapy, radiation, and eventually estrogen blockers. Her bone density went down, and eventually, after we uh, changed her approach, her bone density went up. Here is Laura, who had severe osteoporosis, including family history of it, so it was no surprise that she had it, and we were able to strengthen her bones by between 4 to 7% in one year. And here's Anne, who was active and ate healthy, and despite that, to her surprise, had osteoporosis, and we were able to turn that around as well. So let's jump in. Calcium doesn't reduce fracture risk. That is not just my opinion. This is actually from the government, the National Institutes of Health. On their calcium fact sheet for health professionals, they actually state two contradictory messages. On the one hand, they state that women over 50 should be getting 12, uh, 1,200 milligrams of calcium per day. Yet, they don't actually disclose where they got that number. In their own references from that fact sheet, none, none of those studies actually says 1,200 milligrams per day. Um, but they go on to say that supplementation with both calcium and vitamin D or consumption of dairy products fortified with both nutrients increase to total uh, bone mineral density. And yet, not so much at the femoral neck. So it increased it at the total hip, the wrist, and the lower back, but not the femoral neck. However, later on in the article, they say something contradictory. The results showed that calcium supplementation alone had no effect on risk of hip fracture. How interesting. On the one hand, it improves bone density. On the other hand, it does not reduce fracture risk. Here's another study show, uh, titled A Meta-Analysis of Milk Intake and Fracture Risk, Low Utility for Case Finding. In this study, researchers recruited people who both had a high milk intake and a low milk intake. You would think that if milk, calcium, dairy, etc., strengthens bones, people who drink a lot of milk have much fewer fractures than people who drink no milk. But that wasn't the case. They both had an identical number of fractures. Now, if you want to dive deeper into this and figure out how much calcium do you really need, if 1,200 milligrams per day is not the actual number, how much? What, what is the right number? Furthermore, why doesn't calcium decrease fracture risk? even though it slightly improves bone density. So I cover this in an entire video on your screen right now and in the description below about calcium for osteoporosis. So if calcium isn't the number one nutrient for osteoporosis, what is? It's actually good old protein. Why? Because protein makes up 50% of bone volume and one third, 33% of bone mass. But it's not just theory, there is quite a bit of research to back it up. Here's the one study titled Associations of Protein Intake and Protein Source with Bone Mineral Density and Fracture Risk. Here's what they found. They recruited 60,689 uh, women and divided them into four groups based on their dietary protein intakes. Group number one, less than 16% of their daily calories came from protein. Group number two, 16 to 18%. Group three, 18 to 20%. And group number four uh, uh, got over 20% of their calories from protein. Here were the results. In group number one, they had 16 hip fractures over the duration of the study. Group number two had the same thing. Group number three had seven hip fractures and group number four had five hip fractures. You can see a difference of more than 60% between the lowest protein group and the highest protein group. And that was the only difference. There were no differences in supplementation. There were no differences in medications, age, exercise, etc. Protein intake was the only difference between these groups. Here's another study titled Dietary Protein Intake and risk of osteoporotic hip fracture in elderly residents of Utah. 
Here, the researchers recruited 2,501 people between ages 50 and 89, and they divided them into different groups based on protein intake as well. The results were, again, same thing. Those with the highest protein intake, which made up 30% of their diet, they had a 65% lower risk of fractures than average. That's not compared to the lowest uh, to, to, to the lowest intake group, that's compared to the average group. So now we know that protein is the number one nutrient when it comes to fracture risk reduction, and it also improves bone density. So that begs the question, how much protein do you need? Protein requirements depend on three different factors in no particular order. One is your activity levels. Are you sedentary? Are you doing cardio only, strength training only, or strength plus cardio? Two, your body weight. Of course, bigger people need more, need more protein, need more food. And three, your age. Are you under 60 or over 60? People over 60 require more protein than people under 60. So here is a table where that breaks it down uh, based on your age and activity level and therefore how much you need. If you need to, pause this video right here so that you can uh, find the cell appropriate to you. Now you know how much protein you need, where do you get it? Well, one group is what I call the best protein sources or grade A protein. What makes this grade A is it contains more than 30 grams of protein per serving. What fits into this category is things like meat, fish, seafood, protein powder, and egg whites. Now, th these are broad categories. Not every, meat, every source of meat fits into here. Uh, for example, um, Beef, ground beef that's not extra lean doesn't really fit into this category. Hot dogs, bacon, deli slices, they don't fit into this category. They're great B protein, but all other meat, yes. So things like lean pork, lamb, turkey, um, uh, rabbit, chicken, etc. All those fit, uh, fit great A protein. Then there's what I call grade B protein, which is anything between 10 and 30 grams of protein per serving. That's things like beans between 12 and 14 grams per cup. Lentils, 16 to 18 grams. Chickpeas, 12 to 14 grams. Peanut butter, same thing. Greek yogurt, 12 grams per cup. Icelandic yogurt, um, 18 grams per cup. Protein bars, tw uh, 15 to 20 grams per bar. Then there's what I call grade C protein, which is anything with less than 10 grams of protein per serving. Regular yogurt, five to six grams per cup. One glass of regular milk, uh, that's uh, nine grams per, 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 uh, per glass. One slice or one cube of cheese, that is five or six grams. One medium egg, six grams. One large egg, nine grams. Fruits and vegetables, all extremely low, under five grams. Nuts, very high in calories, very low in protein. Uh, one handful of nuts for a large handful for a big person. 50 grams of, pro of, uh, of nuts contain only six grams of protein, not very much. Now, there is one other nutrient besides protein and vitamin D that can really help with bone density and fracture risk. Now, I talk about this vitamin in a special video that I made that's not available on YouTube, but it is available for free. It's a Stronger Bones Checklist, Six Steps to Improve Bone Density Naturally. You can find this checklist at this link on your screen right, on your screen right now or in the description below.